Hello and welcome to The Big Fight. Once again this week, there was a murder case that really riveted the entire nation and all headlines seem to be around that, that one case. But here on The Big Fight, we're going to partly take a look at that case, but also look at some of the broader issues around it. Number one, what is it saying about morality and the, what is happening in Indian society? That set of questions. Whether there are too many media trials, that's the second set of questions that's coming up. But I also want to turn our focus to something else, which is... A lot of these big, high-profile cases become the only subject of conversation for 10 days, 15 days, 20 days. And then what happens when the cameras are switched off and all attention goes away? Is justice eventually done? Was justice done in some of the other cases that we have seen in the past, whether it is Nirbhay or the Arushi case or Natari or so number of, number of many cases? We'll, we'll, we'll take a look at all of those as we go forward. But let me start by welcoming all of our guests. It's, it's great to have with us. Shatish Manishinde, one of the one of our top uh, criminal lawyers. Uh, wonderful to have you here with us. Shivam Bij, a blogger, who's been writing about lots of this. Uh, Dilip Cherian's with us uh, uh, as well, right here, image consultant. And the Mukherjee certainly need a lot of image consulting right now, one way or the other. Dr. Pulkit Sharma, psych psychologist, uh, psychoanalytic therapist, who can tell us about some of the psychology of what is playing out uh, in, in this and in other cases. China NC joining us uh, from Mumbai to tell us what she thinks is happening in society. Uh, Advaita Kala is uh, joining us as well from, uh, from, from elsewhere in Delhi. And finally, Munalini Deshmukh, one of the country's top uh, divorce lawyers who actually was Indrani Mukherjee's lawyer during her court battle with her ex-husband and now co-accused uh, Sanjeev, Sanjeev Khanna. Uh, thank you all so much for being with us. Before we go any further, in case uh, you have switched on to find out what the very latest is in this particular case, let's quickly run you through it. This is what's happened as of today. Mrilani, why don't I start off with you, um, before I come to all those broader issues that I was talking about, are you somewhat bemused having been Indrani's lawyer during that court battle to now find her as a co-accused along with Sanjeev Khanna uh, and both being accused of, of murdering you know, Indrani's daughter? And by the way, at that time, <coughs> well, did you even know she had a daughter? Were you one of those who felt she had a sister? Yeah. No, well, my role was a very limited role as far as the divorce petition was concerned because she was seeking some legal advice on the jurisdictional issues, on how this process goes on. And obviously, she would visited my chambers along with Peter, uh, who had kind of found out about me as a lawyer to help her out because she was pretty <coughs> new to Mumbai. But um, having said this, yes, does it, am I, I mean, it's really shocked when I, when I read about it and when the journalist told me, the, I, mean, I think two nights back when they called up and they said that this is what the whole thing is, it was completely, I mean, I was taken by shock. I never ever thought that such a thing would have happened. The couple looked so much in love, that is Peter and Indrani, and, and he was trying to help her out with, in, from a marriage which was, a very uh, sort of I would put it that way she was very unhappy in that marriage and I believe <clears throat> if my memory serves me right because this is around 2001 2002 and I believe that he was the one who was not willing to give her divorce I'm talking about Mrs. Sanjeev Khanna and they wanted to know what are the rights and what are the ways to go about it and now that he is a co-accused I guess truth is stranger than fiction that's where it is not happy bitter sort of a divorce how then does he become a co-accused along with her? Why would she turn to him to murder her daughter? I mean, these, these are of course speculations as, uh, as we all know that the investigation is going on and there are always ways and means of finding out what the truth is. But prima facie, based on what the police investigation or the report is, if that is what the whole situation is based on the driver's testimony, then if it's not 100% true, there has to be some truth into the matter. And truly it baffles me because surely there were not and there was an issue of the child custody also then, Vidhi. 
because they were, she was concerned whether you know she would have rights of custody and so on and so forth. So I think from that point of view, uh, yes, f both of them being co-accused, really, really, I mean, okay. you know, really, I don't know what to say about it. Satish, your take specifically on everything that you've read so far, or heard about so far? Well, here is a case which uh, has very complicated issues, very complicated facts. You can say that again. And by the way, if social media is to be believed, there are about a dozen other complications that are still to come to light. So, so we, we are in the hands of a senior police officer, Mr. Rakesh Maria, who is one of the best investigators in the country. And I think the police should be allowed to investigate the case without much interference from the media and society and you know, speculations and the newspapers that we keep reading. And uh, I, have, I have been seeing for the last two days that the media has overshot itself. You know, a large number of channels to outbeat each other are speculating a large number of stories and discussing various issues which almost tell me that they all they already been proven guilty and they're likely to just face yeah, that's, some that's, punishment that's unfortunately which is what very happens unfair, in media which trials. is very unfair on the police machinery on uh, Sheena because they, she has been defamed we will come to this in a, in a couple of minutes because this is not the first time this is happening you've had this thing happening repeatedly time after time Police also leaks it, you know, so it's, it's become like a feeding may frenzy. Have, may right? have leaked it. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a feeding frenzy, right? The media is coming out with stuff, police leaking some stories. We saw this happening earlier. We have, saw this happening with, at the time of the, of, of Arushi, the Arushi murder case, number of other cases, this, this tends to happen. There will be a flip side to that, that they'll say, okay, you know, the, the media is making sure that things aren't being hushed up, but then we'll, we'll take a look at it. As, as, we have, having, as, as we have it today, we have a murder case where the police goofed up, uh, the police goofed up in such a manner that uh, Rahul, uh, who is supposed to have gone to the police station on the next day to report a missing case at Khar police station, was not even given a proper hearing. He went to the Worli police station. Even at the Worli police station, all that the officer did was to call Indrani and ask her about her, whereabout, about her uh, daughter or sister's whereabouts. And she's supposed to have said that she's gone to the U.S. All that the officer could have done was contact the immigration authorities, find out if she has actually left the country. If they want to find out if a criminal has left, they find it out in no time. Why yeah. was it not done in this case? Those two police stations must answer. And this is you're talking about at the time of the murder. Yeah, yeah, at the time of the murder. And after the body was discovered at Raigad, the local police station, apart from getting a scientific analysis done of the remains, they have done nothing in this case. So they, did not again, even, they did not even contact other police stations to find out. So a missing, person, from, a missing person in such a high profile case, if this is the way that original investigation is You can imagine concluded. what will happen to a common man. You can imagine what's going to happen to a common man, absolutely. Advaita, um, your take on, on this particular case and then before we come to the, to the broader issues that Satish was just talking about. I think once again, I think you put it aptly when you said the feeding frenzy has begun. You know, I think I would go one way and say that, you know, the Mumbai police has been good, that they went ahead and made their arrests and kept this out of the media glare to that point. Because uh, you can imagine if uh, people had got wind of the fact that she was under investigation or something untoward had happened to her daughter who has been missing now for three years. So I think you can well imagine how that would have taken off and where the investigation would have, or how the, rather, the investigation would have proceeded. So in that context, I do commend the Mumbai police uh, for having had the foresight of keeping this under wraps till they got their persons of interest. And now, of course, it's a free-for-all, as we said. And what I do find disturbing, and I think it was Mr. Shinde who said this, earlier is really the kind of defamation that, that is ongoing right now. We've seen this before. We've seen it happen with a murdered 14-year-old teen when all kinds of asper aspersions were cast on her character, on the possible reasons and the motives for why she was killed. And we're seeing a similar sort of uh, thing play out with the, another young woman. And I personally find that very disturbing and I would go so far as to say misogynistic as well. Okay. Um, are you somewhat surprised, uh, Advaita, to find the police commissioner, so I think Satish Mani Shinde said that there are big question marks as to what happened three years ago when, when this was first reported. Are you somewhat surprised to find the police commissioner himself taking charge of the interrogation, being out there? Or is that also understandable to your, to your mind to make sure that some of the goof-ups you've seen in the past are not repeated? 
I think it absolutely makes sense. I think this, is, uh, this was going to be a high profile case once it got out into the public. So, uh, and I also think for him to take it on means he, there is steady ground in which he's standing. I mean, you have to remember this all began with a tip off. And uh, subsequently, there was an investigation where they gathered a lot of uh, evidence together to get to a point to make an arrest. So I definitely think he's on firm, somewhat firm ground, even if he doesn't have a confession. And uh, also, I think we cannot uh, negate the fact, uh, the aspect of a class bias. You know, when you're, um, when you're dealing with the administration, when you're dealing with the poli police in some, in some measure, you know, how seriously an interrogation process is taken uh, does have an element of class associated to it. And I don't think we can turn away from that. And, and that, to a certain extent, explains his involvement as well in direct interrogation. Okay. Dilip Charya. You know, there is a steady deterioration in terms of family values, in terms of husband-wife relationships. I mean, it must be a bizarre relationship where a husband has never met either the in-laws or any part of the family and, you know, then gets, you know, foisted by one uh, thing, saying children, then says sister and brother. You know, there, there seems to be many levels of, you know, un, unspoken qualities of the new society. But the most fundamental position of the new society is the role of money and for some reason nobody is willing to talk about the money trail and there is that which will come out so which, you think, which hopefully you think is a very strong money element in all of this which there, will not there, come out. inevitably at some stage that story is going to come out and when it plays out a lot more in terms of motive and the fact that we are in a society today to answer your basic question that we are in a society today where power pelf and paisa are the three most important factors okay. which in some senses are driving everybody's greed and virtually every action. Okay, I, I'm going to come back to that and see whether what were the really some of the motives out here. Shaina, I'd say, do you agree with what Dilip is saying that what's happening and why, we, why there's, there's so much focus in this is the deterioration of, uh, of society and family values and that is something that we are seeing happening across the board and that's what we seem to be seeing in, in case after case which is why uh, there, there's so much interest around it. I guess the counter view to that would be if it's as common as, as, all, that, as all that, maybe it wouldn't be making the headlines. No, I think I completely agree with your assessment that it's not just a deterioration of family values, but it's also a deterioration of everyone who is accepting of the fact or kind of terming uh, Indrani as some kind of charming woman who was very ambitious, who was very arrogant. I think this is not the way to assess this case. One has heard of Kalyug and this is Kalyug at its worst. This story has filth, sleaze, debauchery all packed into like a horror fiction story. And if at all the only hero in this entire episode is the police. And contrary to what Satish Manishinde said, you cannot draw parallels to say what did the police do in Raigad or why did they entertain a complaint or not. Please understand the facts of the case that despite having a serious complainant when nobody said said Sheena was missing. Despite that, it is the same Mumbai police that we constantly, you know, kind of criticize on multiple levels that sorts a case and solves it so beautifully three and a half years down with no systematic failure, with nabbing Indrani moment she comes to Mumbai without anyone getting a whiff of it and having their evidence so uh, watertight that now uh, after the revel revelations that Mr. Rakesh Maria gave out this morning, even the fact that they will be able to conduct DNA tests to prove and to have conclusive evidence to show that Indrani Mukherjee is not some socialite who needs to be taken lightly to suggest she had some complicated thought pattern, but to treat her as a hardcore criminal who has com committed the most gruesome, gruesome okay. act and something no, no, that society at large that. needs to Sadeesh. ostracize. China yeah, says it shows you just how sordid society is and how sordid the people involved in this are, but not that it has some broad, that the police actually are the heroes in this. China is right that uh, police China? must be given a shabashi, but what was happening for the last three years? China? It was lucky that, it was lucky that Mr. Maria got a tip off nobody now. Nobody said, nobody from the family pursued the case, nobody filed a missile missing complaint. Despite that, you have the Mumbai police three and a half years down the line cracking this case with no loopholes and Here no we have of a family. questions of question marks. So in that sense, Here we have you a have family where the mother them. itself is involved. 
We have Peter who says that he didn't know whether she was the sister or the daughter. We have a boyfriend who did not follow up thereafter. We have the brother sitting in Guwahati who was told that his sister is in the U.S. for the last three years and he had no contact with her. Yeah. Uh, surely the police must have realized that there is more to it than meets eye because why is it that somebody who has gone abroad can't be, you know, detected for the last three years. Some photographs. But you know, some frankly, I have to say, I have to say, if no member of the family is complaining for three years, it's a bit unfair to go it's to the police case. who should have kept on following it up. True. When the boyfriend didn't follow it up, the brother didn't follow it up. Obviously, the mother didn't follow it up. The father, nobody followed it up. To expect the police to have been following it up for three years, maybe just a little unkind. I, I, I I'm, I'm not trying to be unkind, but police got the information three years back. Okay. They, they got a body which was discovered at Raigad. The least that they could have done was find they out where did the suitcase emanate from, where, where did the body belong to, where, did they okay. at all contact any of the police stations in the state to find out if some missing person has been done away with. See, okay. one, one is, is this how we are living in this country? One point here is when the police found the body, they did nothing about it. But when they got a tip off that it involves high profile people, we see a high profile investigation with so many people. Is there a class bias even with the police where poor people go and say uh, somebody is missing? We saw this in Nithari. The police does nothing about it. But when the case becomes high profile, the police and the media and society alike is very interested in solving the case. But that's, you know, Sunny, I think you're right. And again, as I'm saying, look at the amount of focus and attention that there is on this and some of the other cases. The fact of the matter are that these are so called in inverted commas, high society, you know, cases or middle class cases at any rate, which seem to get attention. I'm yeah. sure of far worse crimes happen and far worse, uh, you know, incidents happen outside in, in the world, which are outside so-called high society. It doesn't get that much attention. Absolutely. Uh, I, absolutely. And uh, I think that if um, these high profile cases, the kind of attention they get, if this kind of attention were to be given to cases that are not high profile, probably we'll have better policing out there. Yeah. You know, also there's this question of the deafening digital silence. Meaning, you know, in this day and age, a brother and a sister who have been close for the last 20 years or 15 years or whatever it is, cannot just take into account that sisters vanish into America. They must be on Facebook together. They must be on something. You know, there's no, almost the Facebook account got yeah. deactivated. Yeah. I mean, the but point here is, the point I mean, the, 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 the interesting thing, I think he's trying to make yeah. it that nobody was nobody able to was figure even, out for three years that she's bothered. Missing. What part, the of the answer that we bothered. Got, part of the answer we got to that so far is that Indrani managed to bluff everybody to thinking that she's gone to US and she doesn't want to talk to you. Now, I don't know how sort of good an answer that is, but that's the answer we got so far. I think All right. can I can you help, help us with a psych because frankly, it is is probably going to need all of us as audiences sure. lots of psychotherapy to get our heads around everything that's happened so far. Right. Forget about the people concerned. Right. What do you make of the psychology of all that's happened? Right. I think uh, it is something that we have been seeing. You know, I have been seeing this gradually shaping up and uh, uh, like I like to just briefly take you through the process of how this happens and how we can understand it. I think one, uh, you know, hallmark of the times we are living in is loneliness, you know. So everyone like right from the beginning these days if you look you know right when one is a small child one is left alone with a lot of resources and with a lot of things to do but there's a lack of emotional availability of people so what typically happens over there is that a one is free to go into all directions of the mind you know good and bad and one does not have a good sense of what to choose secondly one is somewhere also starts feeling very lonely and sad and that slowly converts into anger so it makes it builds this typical personality that we call you know the narcissistic element in the personality where the person grows up to be someone that they start treating people and human beings as objects who can fulfill their needs and wants you know that they that this whole thing about you know uh, are you talking about indrani in this case yes yes i i am grew up lonely yeah uh, and then became became yeah, the person yeah, you're talking yeah. about. You know, because I was also very struck by this fact that, you know, that uh, if, if Sheena was really her uh, daughter, she had just left these two children with the grandparents, you know, uh, to be just, you know, taken care of, you know. Uh, I mean, uh, whatever the circumstances may be, but I think that uh, once you have a child, uh, you know, uh, it is expected to be emotionally invested 
detected in the child you know okay yeah yeah so i think that then uh, this leads to this particular typical personality pattern where then the person and and i have had cases like this who would you know who would talk about their fathers their mothers their sisters or brothers or boyfriends or husbands as hindrances in their life you know and hindrances that they wish should not be there okay yeah hindrance that that sort of a personality type uh, you know that uh, that that we are just hearing about uh, right now advaita there, there are some people who will uh, who will say that it's almost a character uh, caricature which is now being painted and it's happened with other people in in the past also you know somebody and and sometimes it's particularly painted this way about women you were talking about a you know, misogynistic element and all of this it is sometimes painted about a woman somebody who was a climber wanted to go up change where she came from in life we've heard this in other cases also including some other high profile murders that took place just a year ago uh, would you agree with the characterization that we're hearing out here well i think you know there is a tendency for everyone to be profilers you know criminal profilers when something like this happens and then you try and pick attributes uh that are available to you about a person that you don't know and then try and link that to crime you know and and the thing about murder is that is that anyone can commit it i mean depends on the motivation so you know to assume that because someone is for example ambitious or or decided for needs which at that point of time in their life could have been uh, whatever they may have been and hence motherhood became secondary to their life uh is something that we shouldn't uh, sit in judgment of because there are a lot of women single mothers who have to fall back on family support to raise their children and go out there into the world and make their livelihood they don't end up murdering their children or doing anything of that sort so i think we should sort of stay away from this type casting you know this familiar kind of path to go down where you say oh you know she was uh, she abandoned her children so to speak i, I don't i don't think uh, you necessarily need to look at life choices like that without knowing circumstances and really you know kind of applying that to women across the board so i find that problematic and okay. the other thing also i think in this relationship i mean the the element of dysfunction that we detect in this family you also have a new phenomenon and that of the blended family and when you have the blended family uh, there are relationships where intimacies come into questions where park equations especially between parent and child are not that clearly defined as they would be in a traditional family with biological parents and children and i think you see a little bit of that at play here because you don't right. really know not, uh, how these people I'd related like to, to each other in the new relationships they found yeah. themselves yeah. so in. Uh, Javin, i think the point that she's making and is that is that yeah. also correct in one of the things in this case which i think is why it's getting so much attention True. is the number of different relations that seem to be True. taking True. place between a number of different people some of whom have blood relations not blood relations True. you know uh, step relations right right does that complicate matters a lot yeah it does because you know when you have uh, you know a family that's coming from you know too many sources and where there are you know this interchange of two three families everyone has a lot of you know baggage of emotions that are not dealt with you know and then everyone also sees the new members of the family in a totally different light you know so i i would say that in fact everyone is slightly suspicious of this thing because you don't have that family member till okay. one point of time and then someone just walks into your life as a family member and you don't know what that person's intentions are you know that makes you really suspicious. right uh, china you want to make a quick point yeah i just want to make a point you know we're sitting here rationalizing suggesting all kinds of philosophies to say that was she lonely as a child uh, was she fiercely ambitious there are hundreds of women thousands of women who are fiercely ambitious some of which are arrogant as well but not any of them are murderers and certainly not in their own family space so i think let's not justify and give her this you know uh, rational and logic let's uh, just understand that indrani mukherjee that. is a I, hardcore I criminal yeah. i mean no. the fact yeah. is that she is a hardcore criminal we are just trying to understand it, it. To be see, 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 we are just every level we are just speculating we are trying to understand it and it's a very common phenomena and i'd also like to say one thing that you know that we can't really we have all of us have become very individualistic we say it is about our right right or desire or life choices but you know when we are as a family that also includes certain responsibilities we can't be just all okay. of us can't be going on our own China? paths with a complete freedom you know that in itself is madness china so you your your view would be that that's exactly why family system should not break down no i was on a debate earlier vikram where somebody said that oh indrani is a brilliant actress and i turned around and said she's not a brilliant actress she's a brilliant con artist so please view it in perspective 
you know i mean uh, we can all have various justifications to various issues but something which is wrong and so grossly wrong needs to be condemned in totality and this needs to be ostracized because we as a society are degrading by having any kind of reason logic rationale for something which cannot be okay. within the boundaries of rational so mrinali let me let me just come back to you the, this this picture that is being that is seems to be emerging of a rather extremely dysfunctional family although on from the, on the surface of it on the face of it it looked absolutely you know fine from outside i guess uh, at that time you met them you interacted with them was that what was coming across even at that time well i would not say i did not know the extent of the or, or the, the manner in which the, the the whole family was so dysfunctional which has now been unearthed after all these things third husband and second wife and children etc etc all that combination I mean, things which are doing husband and wives and all that's okay that does happen it's some of the other things that are a bit no, more no, that's you know, that's, questionable yeah 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 so that that's what all happens but you know when uh, you will appreciate one thing that when when clients come to us and obviously we we do respect their privacy and we do not dwell into it so long as it is going to be done by consent in certain cases we need to know what the facts of the case are because we need to sort of you know build up a case based on what the facts are in law however in this case what i really noticed was that the main concern uh, of indrani at that point of time was that she was very keen to have the custody of the child that is vidhi if that's what i i mean i down learned the, uh, that about her custody and she was a little skeptical about it so i did see a streak of her you know the maternal instincts which were there so much as we may say now and probably <clears throat> what the facts are will prove to the contrary to what i'm saying but it was not something that she was a cold blooded woman who had no maternal instincts because her constant questions to me were mrinalini what will happen to the custody will i retain the custody of my daughter and will there be any issues how does it how is it legally sound etc etc so as much as she was concerned about the divorce her concern for the custody of the girl child was also there so i may not be able to say based on my limited interactions with her as a client who had come at that point of time that she was she was absolutely bereft of any of these maternal instincts or a cold blooded murderer as has been sort of you know said about it probably it is true as far as she nice is concerned but if you ask me per se as a person i don't think i found that i found that the mother in her still very much sort of alive and wanting to know what the things are Did and he? secondly and more importantly is as about the dysfunctional families that are being that we are talking about things which are there truly i had no idea that she had some two other husbands prior to mrs sanjeev khanna who was there and i i i should confess to that so my it was the, the brief that was that she was married to so and so a child from so and so and now she wants to take a divorce and move on in life with peter so to that limited extent my whatever the advice i give at that point of time was there but this dysfunctional family has now been unearthed after these uh, sort okay. of the investigation you know, but, you know, that the has come up the thing is that the dysfunctionality is clearly not limited to just one personality I meaning here is a husband an ex husband who then turns out to be an accessory to the crime you know so yeah, that's the very, that's very levels at, at I mean, which really this is know. this is operating is clearly something which and there are other aspects the daughter not who's the sister you know, and who to the some extent was, this is where i think relationships this is where i think media is playing a, an interesting role because there is no way a story like this is not going to be riveting front page news and going to roll 24 by 7 you know at the risk of saying that it's banal the fact is that this kind of banality is what middle class you know households are riveted by except that if ekta kapoor were to make a serial like this should be laughed off the stage because so, nobody could believe so many complications within one you know so so you know for for all the reasons that we are saying we can understand why there would be what i was calling earlier a media feeding frenzy so now let's be turn to that question does it help or does it hurt because i have seen notably on at least some of the channels people questioning this is good because it is only when you are focusing so much attention on it that the bad people get caught and the bad people get nailed so this vanishan date strongly in a, in disagrees with like that in a case like this in a case like this it's possible that you know the fact that the police have unearthed it after 3 years there could be more persons involved in this crime uh, so first of all when when the story broke out 
it was flashed in such a manner that uh, you know Sanjeev Khanna, who was in Calcutta, could have run away and made himself scarce. So his name was reported, his involvement was being reported. So it, it, it was lucky that the police got him. Secondly, we have got some uh, other individual who has forged the signature of Sheena and sent it to Reliance and to the landlord. He too could have absconded. Uh, there are other materials in this case, like, like, like the material which was found in Raigad, which, which could have been destroyed. So media should be a little more cautious in reporting you know, these kinds of cases till the police finally close the investigations and file a charge sheet in the case. What I'm trying to say okay, is... Okay, no, 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 I'm not, I'm I'm not entirely disagreeing with what, you that the media what, can play a negative no, role. No, no, media, media can play, but practically you, you, speaking, can, you don't have to disclose all material particulars in a case. No, no, but this material is also being disclosed by people who are doing the investigation. So the fact is that, you know, it's all right to take the view that they should be very responsible and hold it back for the day when the case is finally solved and goes to trial. The fact is that this feeding yeah, frenzy that's is one. being Secondly, fed by people. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, no, no, the no, fact of the matter is, no, 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 one minute. you can't say different media would have different standards. I think the, the simple point I'm making is, even at this moment, there are a lot of facts, a lot of theories, a lot of alleged facts that are circulating around, which, which, all, of us, which all of us as journalists are aware of. They're there. We've, we've heard about them. We know the theories. We, it's, all of that is not going on in public domain. We're not putting it on the channel. I'm not having graphics behind me saying, here is theory number one, two, three, four, five, which I've heard about since the morning, which we are not talking about unless it is confirmed. So, be no to that extent, to that extent, what Dilip is saying is that yes, it's when something comes out from the police, slightly confirmed, that's when we do it. Should maybe everyone does need to exercise far more caution than they do. You know, there, there are, are, there are a large number of people who watch your show. There are a large number of people who watch other shows. What I'm trying to communicate I mean, to the public, I can't control what, what, what I'm trying to communicate to point. the public is that the media role is should necessary only in our society. No, so therefore, appeal to the public, they should asked. only be watching responsible shows NDTV like this. That's what you have to say. To yeah, tune into this and don't watch anything exactly. else. Exactly. Can we really blame the media when, if you go out at the pawn shop on Twitter, everywhere people are speculating, everyone's trying to solve this? It's a, it's a bloody riveting case. Who, who doesn't love you know, a good murder uh, yeah, mystery? This is five actually, times more interesting than Gone Girl. Excuse me. I, I, I mean, am I lying here? Aren't we all Shiva, loving this story? Shiva, this, is Shiva, a, this, is a, this is a reality TV. Shiva, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Yeah. Story. I get it. I get story. it. I get what you're saying, and I and I get why the media has to cover this, right? It is a it is a, a, a big story. There's a lot of interest yeah. around, and the media has to cover it. But I do agree with him that the media can also be responsible and in not cautious. putting out right. any crazy theory. If I was to show you just some of the theories I have right now on this phone right now, it'll make your toenails curl. I'm sure half of them are wrong. But no, no, see, one reason why we have there. so many theories is because the Mumbai police hasn't yet told us the, told us the motive. The moment the Mumbai motive police says, out. we think this is the motive, a lot of this speculation okay. will end. China, should the media not be covering this at all? Should the media cover it more responsibly? Should the media go to town even more than it is right now? What's your view? No, I think that this case, clearly the media has had no role because the revelation has been done by the Mumbai police. Mm. So, uh, if on the 25th it wasn't for the Mumbai police, I don't think the media would have even followed it. But the media has followed it because of all the gory details and I don't think there can be a more bizarre case than this. So, Vikram, you're saying that you have 100 theories on your phone or so many people anticipating all kinds of theories. That is only because this is anyway such a bizarre story that people are adding their mirch masala. But I think your role as media is most crucial at this juncture because what type of a message are we sending out to society at large and to the family structure and to our society that unless these type of cases where you have hardened criminals who are ostracized, we cannot tend to have any kind of logic to say it was a money trail, maybe she was lonely in her childhood, maybe she was extremely fiercely ambitious, etc. That kind of rational, she had maternal instincts or not, these are not areas of concern. The area of concern should be that she is a hardened criminal to have committed this kind of act vis-a-vis -vis her own daughter and this is something okay, that you... we as a country at large uh, completely condemn. All right. Fair enough. Advaita, Advaita, let, let me come back to you on the, on the media feeding frenzy sort of an angle to this. I said if I put on my thriller writer's hat for a moment and throw in another theory into the mix and I really do think, I mean this is viable because uh, if you look at the case as of now, 
uh, you know, I think the media could also be being played, you know, in terms of building a op public opinion about really what the case is and who could be guilty of it. Because uh, on paper, or at least what's come out in the press, is really there is no body. Uh, the DNA samples that have been collected, one doesn't know how viable they are after three years. Uh, the, the case essentially rests on confession and uh, some of the things that we've heard out of the police station or uh, something on another channel when I was there on the debate last night was really Indrani Mukherjee saying uh, through her legal team that they're compelling me to confess. So the case really rests on a confession as well as overwhelming public opinion which we have seen in the past uh, really, you know, being uh, sort of uh, fostered by uh, the police uh, pushing their line of argument and, uh, you know, sort of translated and transmuted it across the board by the media. So I think, you know, there is, uh, there is an element of a little bit of uh, manipulation here as far as public opinion and pressure is concerned. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I, think, I think that's a valid point. And Dilip, I want to come to all of you on this right. because it's not, it's not entirely beyond the realm of, of uh, possibility what Adweta is saying right now. And it has perhaps happened in the past. You've had media feeding frenzies and, and other cases. Right. When everything quietens down, you're not completely sure whether justice has always been served in that sure. case. I mean, take, take the case of Arushi, for example, where all these years later, um, there are still a large number of people who believe that Arushi's parents didn't do it. They are innocent and they are, and they are, and they are in jail for something that they didn't actually commit. Uh, so, is justice always going to be served? You know, they're going to be carrying on trials in this manner. The theory of media being played and therefore justice not being served because media has got played in a particular direction is a theory which is worth exploring. If you take for one minute the fact that some, some television channels and not yours have actually carried an audio uh, interview with Peter Mukherjee. There's no television, no, no visual coverage of him. I have no but, idea whom you're talking yeah, about. And, <laughs> and therefore it is bizarre that a, cha a television channel should do an audio interview with somebody when they're sitting well, in front of them. Phone, we so, did a phone interview so with him also two days ago. <laughs> everybody's done a phone interview. <laughs> Adequate so disclosure, every, but we didn't say it's a phone everybody's interview. Everybody's done a phone interview. <laughs> Nobody, and, and in this case, a particular channel went there and actually did a face-to-face a -face in voice. So, is media being played? Who's playing it? And do we really know what's going to unravel yet? That's one thing. But in terms of, you know, playing out these theories in the public domain and the question which you raised, I think that one needs no. to... Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Uh, no. I know. In, yeah. One needs to be careful that we don't allow s cases, whether they are low profile or high profile, to just vanish unless they are sorted. I think, and I so think hang on, hang on, hang on. So that, that brings me, uh, Mr. Mr. Manish, that brings me to the point that you were making. You know, wait for them to file a charge sheet, then see what emerges. Let's look at some of the cases that in the past that have come out, right? Today, once the media attention has gone away from them, are we completely sure that justice has been done? And just look at them. I'm going to just put up some of them for you. Nithari, what actually happened? Pandar was, was, was uh, acquitted. He's still facing trial in some cases. Kohli's was, uh, death sentence was commuted to life imprisonment for an inordinate delay. Still not completely sure what's happening out there. Take the Nirbhay case. The entire country was speaking about nothing but the Nirbhay case till now. What's happened all these, 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 these years later? Ram Singh hung himself. What's happened to the others, the juvenile perpetrator? You know, in all these cases, the trials went on, went on before a special court. They were convicted or either acquitted, you know, whatever the result came in. But now they're lying in the high court. Let me just carry on that list because you'll see some other cases, a case like Jessica Lal, where actually it was being buried before the, the media took it up. So that was the case where media intervention may well have had an impact. Nitish Katara, I spoke about Arushi, where, I, where again we are not very convinced that the process of justice is necessary. In a large so, number of cases, you have seen the convictions being upheld right up to the Supreme Court. But then it has taken donkey's years for, for these cases to go up to the Supreme Court. That's because, you know, we have uh, uh, the number of judges which is totally inadequate. We need a five-fold number of judges all over the country in all the three tiers of the justice system. Apart from all that, we have lots of these witnesses who don't come to the court and support the cases. They turn hostile because there's no witness protection system in our country. Thirdly, thirdly, the money power plays a big role because it's so the, my, rich the, point, and the point I'm trying to make. It's the so, rich so and so powerful so who, so who are the point, justice. 
But hang on, some cases it's the rich and powerful who are then, who some people will say were being treated unfairly in, 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 uh, in a couple of In a few cases. cases. In a few of those cases. In the case of, again, I'm coming back, back to the case of Arushi where, where her parents, you can, people, there, there are different views on that, but then in that case, they are in, in jail. They, they, they were they convicted, convicted at the end of the day. They have been convicted by a trial court. So they are, they are there okay. facing... I think facing the point I'm trying to make is, I'm, think, I'm trying to make a point is that there's one thing to say, oh, that there should be no media trials. And I tend to agree there should be no media trials. But I think the whole process, to be really effective, you should have much faster than police investigations, much, much faster, faster judicial, judicial system. system, actually get the trials done, have a, 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 a verdict out there, which is reasonably robust, and then you're saying, fine, you're Special good to go. Agency Maybe to that's prosecute. why everybody does the media trial. Because Special you know the, to prosecute justice in the court is going to be not easy, so let's yeah. have a media trial. That's the only thing that seems to have been that's immune what I was trying not is to that say. the courts haven't changed, but definitely today, as a result of these cases and high-profile cases and coverage, people, even in the villages, are demanding of the cops a lot so more would, than they used yeah, to. Yeah, in fact, I would, you know, uh, I have uh, three short points to make. I would really second that, you know, because we are so caught up in our lives. And I think the role of media is very important to shake us, you know, out from that and to make us aware and to make us, okay. uh, you know, a uh, participant in that. And also, you know, when we are talking about media speculations, I think that happens. Because whenever you have something really bizarre out there, it is a tendency of human mind to make some sense of it, you know, whatever it can based on the limited okay. evidence. But can't really stop that. But you can do it in a responsible manner. Included. Right yeah. now, uh, Indrani Mukherjee's legal team has just about begun speaking. In a few months from now, it's possible that Indrani Mukherjee is out on bail or her legal team, her PR people start giving us a completely different narrative. And it's possible that three, three, five years from now, we might have a movie that may make us actually sympathize with Indrani Mukherjee. So the media narrative actually changes and the victim and the accused and the wrongdoers often also use this media trial to okay, their favor. Shall Fine. Uh, China, your, your take on this. That's why I said, Vikram, the responsibility of the media is extremely crucial in a state like, in a, in a particular but case But we can't, like this the media, okay. Because it's way too much of sleaze, filth, debauchery for anyone to have, uh, you know, some You're watching the wrong channels. That's, China, I keep telling you, you're watching the wrong channels. If you watch the right no, ones, you I'm wouldn't be seeing too much of that. <laughs> All right. Um, the, uh, the, the, the point about if we had faster... If you had a faster legal system, which would get punishment faster, maybe you wouldn't have so much time spent on media trials. Although, to be fair, this is, happens in every country of the world. There is not a single place that I can think of anywhere where you want to take. There will be big high-profile murder North cases, Korea. which will get all the things. From O.J. Simpson, well, maybe North Korea, okay, you won't, you won't talk about the fact that this guy's uncle has been fed to the dogs or whatever. But in most other countries, you know, you will have it going on. I mean, for years you will speculate about what happened at OJ Simpson. which is fully on the TV, played live, but they don't interfere with the investigations. They don't interfere with the uh, speculative stories. So that's what I'm trying to tell you. Actually, you two have speculative mm. stories just you about it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the I number of speculative stories we saw in all of these cases yeah. is yeah. actually... Pretty, because pretty it is a tendency no, of human I, I mind to, to make some sense out of what is here. happening. Does the media trial actually influence the courts or not? Does it? I'm sure, you know, a large number of judges and people involved in the justice system see it. We may say that it may not, in, it may not necessarily interfere, but I shudder to think that it, in, it, it interferes because every now and then a judge is being fed with these kinds of stories that he's... Uh, many, many, many a time it so happens that judges come to us in the court and say that we already read your arguments in the press. Because, because the media, <laughs> media reports all of them. And I think it makes sense because the influence can also happen at a very, sub okay. at a very okay. subliminal level. level. All right, I'm going to take, take a break. Let me turn to the audience then and see what they make of all of this. That's in just a couple of minutes when we come back after this break. Welcome back to the big fight. Let me now turn very quickly to the audience and see who has a comment or a, to make on this. Yeah. So uh, somewhere down the line, as in uh, these cases come to limelight, these uh, so-called elitist cases come to limelight because somewhere down the line it is embedded in our psyche that people from the so-called elitist class, they live happier lives than us. So what is it exactly that drives them to such crimes? What, okay, what but actually if you, to, if you were to see what emerges from this, I'm not sure they're leading a particularly happy life. They have more money, but not necessarily happiness. Is yeah. the media too quick in concluding things before they emerge? Like when DK Ravi the was... The answer to that is it depends which channel you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, yeah. 
Uh, do you think that, uh, you know, uh, in a lot of cases, because of the media trial, there's a, pre a preconceived notion of the judgment of the case? So, in terms when it doesn't happen that way in the court itself, do you think that leads to a negative precedent where we start to question the judgment itself? Okay. Yeah, the lady here. I think the focus is shifting from the victim to solving the mystery. Once the public and the media is satisfied that the mystery has been solved, the case is given up and our focus is not giving justice to the victim. Okay, fair enough. It's a good point. Right, let me get final thoughts from everybody. Mrinalini, let me start with you. Final thoughts on the show. I've heard these comments from your, from your audience also and I think these are very pertinent things. One of the things is that where, uh, is it because a lot of attention is given because it's about the high profile cases? I think yes, it's public curiosity also that you must agree that they want to know more which is happening in the rich and the famous as they call it in their personal lives because it's a human tendency and human nature to know more about it, number one. Number two, I would not say that you know, media should be completely banned about it. I think they should play a role, and, but they should play a very okay. constructive and a very responsible role. And lastly, if I may just conclude one thing, that yes, as all responsible people, these are all speculations. It's, it's like an Agatha Christie novel that we are reading. And right. I do agree that everybody wants to know more about it. But really, the police who has done a lovely job, we let them continue. Okay. And they will Fair. come out. They will give us all the information and then we can take it forward right. from Advait there. Advaita, final quick, quick thoughts from you. So I think you know there is a consequence when you when you decide to you know pursue something to this kind of uh, eccentric, almost obsessive extent. And uh, we've seen this in the past already. People have already decided who's guilty and who's not. And I can't help but uh, think that that is a disservice to the process of justice. Right. Okay. Final thoughts. That this case really highlights for me, you know, and for each one of us to be really, uh, you know anchored in ourselves and in our families you know I think uh, that that's one main thing and about the media I think that it has a very important and a very significant role uh, it can uh, whatever it has to say it can bring that out as speculations you know okay yeah. fair enough Dilip. I would say that new society needs to be looking at itself and figuring out what the immediate damage and the long-term damage to what we are creating is we have released a whole bunch of new free spirits as it were you know loneliness you know digital media pursuit of money all these things but what the, what the consequences are are now also coming home to roost and there are many many consequences well, yet to be played out that it's all got to do with money anyway and that's what we're going to find absolutely. out absolutely yes okay yes. Shivam? i think one phrase we're not hearing here in with your own theory just to what's behind all of this I and mean, he says it's money <coughs> if you have another theory let us no, know no well if, you know some suggestion is honor killing and I think we're not hearing the phrase honor killing as much as we should. Uh, we have this belief that middle class urban elites are incapable of honor killing is something people will just do. And I think that's something we need to think about. Okay. You know, here we have a crack officer who has cracked the case in Mr. Rakesh Maria. Uh, he must be given sufficient time to investigate and bring out the motive. And before he tells the entire nation as to what the motive was, I think the media should restrain itself. Uh, a case like this should be investigated by uh, uh, the best officers right. and, and, and the charge sheet filed, you know, as soon as possible and the case be referred to a fast track court so that... And then a process so of that justice also carried out fast. So that ultimately justice is rendered to Sheena. All right. Uh, thank you all so much for having joined us in this episode of The Big Fight. We'll be back next week.